great. Thanks everybody uh, for being here. It's really nice to see you all. Happy New Year. Uh, happy MLK Day. It's gonna be um, a big week and um, all hopeful about 2021 and happy to put 2020 in the rear view mirror. That's, that's my take anyway. So um, as you may have heard, uh, John Murray, my co-chair, is not able to join us this morning because he was called into a last minute meeting. Also, um, Mary Waldron will not join us either because her mom recently passed away, sadly. Um, so her, the services are today. So uh, that's the reason why, why she's not here. So the meeting may be a, a little bit less longer but we'll certainly have time to cover everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and um, I'll do a roll call and I'm just gonna call folks out how I see them on the screen. If you could just you know, announce yourself and um, that you're here and what organization you represent, that would be great. So uh, Dottie. I'm here with OCPC. Great. Joanne? Joanne here with Old Colony Planning Council. Thank you. Laurie? Hi, Laurie Muncy with Old Colony Planning Council. Great. Mary Ellen? Mary Ellen DeFrias with Mass Development. Thanks. Ray? Great. Ray Garino with Old Colony Planning Council. Thank you. Stephanie. Stephanie Danielson, the town of Easton. Thank you. Uh, John. You're on mute. I thought you were doing John, that. John Costa, oh, town of Avon, Alton, Delegate. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mass Hire, Jason. Good afternoon, Jason Hunter, Mass Hire, Greater Brockton Workforce Board. Thanks, Jason. Jay? Jay Tikas, Mass Development. Thanks. And Rob? And Rob May, City of Brockton. Thanks, Rob. Uh, I'm now going to go ahead and read the Title VI statement that we have. Um, this is the Accessibility and Non-Discrimination Statement. The Old Colony Suds Committee fully complies with the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and related statutes and regulations in all programs and activities. The Old Colony Suds Committee operates without regard to race, color, national origin, including limited English proficiency age, sex, disability, ancestry, ethnicity, gender, gender, gender identity, or expression, <clears throat> sexual orientation, religion, creed, veteran status, or background. Any person who believes that they, or any specific class of persons to be subject to discrimination prohibited by Title VI may by themselves or by a representative file a written complaint with the Old Colony SEDS. Complaints are to be filed no later than 180 days following the date of the alleged discrimination. This meeting is accessible to people with disabilities and those who have limited English proficiency. Accessibility accommodations and language services will be provided free of charge upon request and as available. Please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833, extension 202 for additional information. Okay, so um, I know that Dottie sent out the information um, along with notification for this meeting of the minutes from our last meeting in December. And so um, I imagine that everyone's had a chance to look that over prior to this meeting. Does anyone need additional time to review the minutes? 
And does anyone have any questions about the minutes? So if not, then I will entertain a notion to accept a motion to accept the minutes from December. Motion to accept the minutes. Is there Rob a second? second? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any dissent? Okay, so the meeting minutes from December meeting are accepted. Madam Chair, I'd like to be abstain. You'd like to abstain? Yes, I, I was not there, so okay. I can't. You I were can't. not there. Okay, right. thank you, John. Appreciate that. And make a note of that. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to turn it over to Joanne. Uh, as you are the new uh, recent addition, this is in your position as Senior Economic Development and Sustainability Planner, is that correct? That's right, yes, thank you. I'm thank happy you. to be here, folks. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Lori, actually, um, just to say a few words, and then we'll be hearing from Dottie. Okay, great. Hi, I'm here to introduce Joanne. Um, actually. Um, a lot of you already know her. She's been with OCPC since the beginning of um, 2020. Um, she has now been promoted to Senior Economic Development and Environmental Planner, and she'll be responsible for the five-year Comprehensive Employment Development Strategy, or the SEDS document that you're very familiar with. And she'll be working with all of you as we develop updates to that plan and try to capture projects that are on your mind for funding in the future. So she's going to be your new face and um, so you're going to be in great hands. Thanks, Lori. So um, Dottie's got um, a whole bunch of discussion lined up for our meeting today. Um, moving forward, we're going to look to just kind of um, get some of our ducks in order. Um, review the terms of reference for the steering committee and kind of set an annual meeting calendar um, and talk about webinars that we want to have. So we'll get to kind of some nuts and bolts um, at our future meeting, but today it's going to be turned over to Dottie. Great. So we're very happy to have Joanne in that role. And uh, we already work on a number of things together. So I'm really excited uh, about moving forward. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to talk about, as I've talked to some of the people, um, you know, in our region since I've started in July is, you know, what is the SEDS and why is it valuable? We're really trying to find ways to promote that to people. Um, we worked on an EDA grant with Stoughton and um, part of the, the EDA, especially for a grant, is does it tie back to the SEDS document? So fortunately, that project was listed in the SEDS document, but I'm not sure how many people um, know the relevance of why the SEDS is important and how we should be looking at it and what OCPC has to do to update it. I know that Rob, um, a lot of the things in Brockton, you know, are in the SEDS, but we, we really need to be looking at that um, always to, you know, look at how we are achieving those goals and then also what new things need to be added. So I, what we did is we just um, pulled some pieces out of the long SEDS document because I won't put anybody on the spot and say who's read it cover to cover, but um, I know, oh, there, Rob, we're gonna get you a gold star. <laughs> so um, we do wanna just cut out the pieces so that everybody knows what we're looking at and, and what we'll be looking at through the year. So I am going to share my screen um, with, let me see. And while you're working on that, can I just say that this year's SEDS, the one that we're currently in, looks incredible compared to previous years? Oh, great. Very good. Can everyone see that now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, I put down the page numbers of where these goals are listed, and I'm not going to go through and read all of these exhaustively, but just want to give everybody kind of an idea that it's, you know, the very beginning part of the SEDS is a lot of data and information about the region, um, you know, different statistics, demographics, really important and great information. Uh, but that changes a lot, and particularly when this was written before COVID, a lot of those numbers are going are to be changed now. 
Um, but the goals really do remain the same. Um, so uh, each of these goals, I, I put the page numbers as to where those are noticed. Um, so there's um, A through G for the different goals. And then under that, um, the goals is specifically for economic resiliency. And those really um, tie into where we, we are with COVID, where we didn't realize that at the time. And then the priority projects are listed by community. And these, um, you know, some of them have one, one of them and some of them have like Brockton has a lot. Um, so these are things that we have to update annually um, for the SEDS and we have to um, show our progress or the changes on them. So if there's people that are coming to these meetings that are from these regions, we these towns and cities, they, we hope that they'll um, give us you know, updates and at least know that these are the things that we're working on. But we're also going to set up individual one-on-one -on -one meetings with the towns and, and um, city so that we can really get a good feel for what's going on not just to make sure that it's it's just tied into the SEDS, but also we see a lot of grants that come along and we try to put those in um, the newsletter or we send them out on social media. We're working on a new website now and we hope to have a list where people, it will be the go-to for all the grants that are available. But from the municipal perspective, and I know this from my role in Easton, there's so much information coming at us all the time. It's really hard with, especially with grants. So if we know that a particular town is doing something and we see a grant that we think is important for that, we can flag that. So the more that we know about these strategies, the better. So um, just flipping through some of these so you can see kind of, kind of the ideas. These are the locally proposed projects and um, we're gonna work to, I'm not really sure, you know, how it's what's a local versus a priority project. Someone here, probably Rob or Stephanie, or someone who's been on this for a long time, may know um, a little bit more about that. So, uh, just going through some of these, and we can break out some pieces of these um, if anybody wants a specific piece, but these are really the highlights of it. If you go into the actual SEDS document that's on our website, you'll see the detail that's behind um, behind these. So that's that's really about it for the SEDS document. So any anybody have any comments or anything to add to that? I, I have a quick question. Sure. Or a question. Um, if I remember correctly, we're now working on a rolling five-year SEDS, kind of like the TIP does? Yes. Um, so we produce a big document once every five years, and then there's a series of, of reports that go in um, annually. Is that is that still the, the situation? Yes. Yep. So I think those annual reports are due in the June timeframe. So we have a lot of work to do with our 17 communities to make sure that we're able to be in touch with all of them and, and get these updated and really be familiar with um, the projects that are, that are in the SEDS. So I have a question. I have a question. Um, actually for Rob. <laughs> I'm wondering um, if he could elaborate on his earlier comments on how this is a much improved document from the previous SEDS documents. I think that would be helpful. Um, sure. It is um, improved tremendously graphically. Uh, hmm. the, the tables and charts um, have, have improved. And I believe, if I remember right, um, you know the the way you the way the report is organized, and you know the goals and the communities and the goals and the communities uh, is is far superior to what it was, and I believe um, uh, Lori and um, uh, who else was doing working on that? Uh, I, I think Lori and Joanne were involved heavily in improving the graphics 
uh, of this and the organization of the report. Well, that sounds about right. Lori, I don't know if you want to add anything, but um, Lori is an incredible job at all the reports that she works on. So there is definitely a signature um, that, you, that you'll notice um, from that. Lori, do you want to add anything? A lot of happy colors. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I want to sort of underscore the importance of layout and design in, in order. Do you know what I mean? Because um, as you were saying earlier, Dottie, it's, it's very, you know, what the work that the SED does is um, critically important, but it's very, very dense. You know, it tends to be dense information, a lot of charts, a lot of lists, a lot of, um, um, a lot of info. So the content is really dense. And, you know, a lot of people find it difficult to digest if you're not in the sort of planning space. Um, so for folks who are coming um, at this from a different perspective um, or different context, the easier, it is to read, you know, the more effective the document is going to be, um, the more people will be engaged in it. And I think that that even ties to uh, what you said earlier a little while ago about creating, um, you know, a centralized location for all of the grants that come your way. Right. It's, 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 again, it's like whatever we can do to make it cleanest and simplest and easy to navigate um, is going to be helpful to the SEDS and that will help, you know, engage more communities and more people who can benefit from the work. So that's great. It's a huge yeah. step in the right direction. I think it's also important for the for the region to be able to see what's going on in the different towns, because one of the things with the EDA grants is that those are based on um, on the the um, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, what am I thinking of, Lori? Um, <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot now because I'm. To demonstrate the distress, that's what I'm trying to say, distress, to demonstrate the distress that your community is going through and why you need this grant to fix it. And a lot of the communities, like for instance, Easton might not have a high unemployment rate, but Brockton may or Stoughton may. So you have to look at how the project impacts not just your particular community, but regionally what's the impact because then you can use the statistics from the region and that might look different than if you use the statistics just from your community. So for, for instance, for Stoughton, um, the application that they just submitted, it's for a sewer infrastructure project for their industrial park but they'll be drawing from the labor pool of, um, of Stoughton, Brockton, Avon, the communities that are near that. Well, that changes the distress criteria and it helps paint a better picture of the economic conditions, the unemployment conditions, and that all helps with those um, goals. And, and just speaking of Stoughton, um, for their MassWorks grant, they actually collaborated with Avon and got support from Brockton um, because of that project connects with those other two towns and vice versa. Avon used support from Stoughton to get um, support for their MassWorks grant. So I think that if the municipalities see what's going on in the areas around them, it can be really helpful to say, how can we make these regional connections um, one other thing that was in the Stoughton, and I hate to keep picking on them, but that's the one that I really spent a lot of time with so far on their um, grants are the, the EDA rep asked, would the employers, so this is all about creating jobs. If, if this grant is creating jobs, will those businesses work with mass hire to post the jobs and to get any training for the, for the um, people that are going to be hired? So my first thought was, well, we can't force businesses to do anything, but wow, that's a real 
uh, asset that we have that they may not know about. So we should certainly make those connections. And when we did make those connections, they were very eager to definitely use mass hire as a resource. So some of those things are so obviously in front of us and, and you don't really think about it unless you say, oh, hey, Stoughton made that connection to use mass hire. We should do that in our project too. So I think sharing that information to me anyway, is very helpful um, and, and might remind you of things that, you know, we didn't, that really didn't jump out as much. So what, when we do this, I'm not sure, you know, some of the people that have been on this longer might have an idea of how did you get the information or like if we're looking at the annual monthly meetings for SEDS, we wanted to try to do maybe four or more webinars with relevant presenters. Um, Dr. Melnick is scheduled to come back in March for another follow-up on economic conditions of the Commonwealth. We may ask Juan Vega to come in and speak um, in May to talk about the changes to MassWorks and the, the process that they've um, kind of tweaked a little bit. But on, on the off months when there isn't a speaker, what does this group think would be a good way to share this information or how did you do that in the past? Was there a, you know, for, for hands-on working meetings like this, um, was that helpful? Is that something that a lot of people would come to these meetings, do you think? Any ideas? Um, maybe you can clarify that a little bit, Dottie. Um, you're thinking of um, adding, you know, guest speakers, right, to some of the meetings, and and we've done that, you know, sort of throughout over the last two years, longer than that, um, that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, is the question, which what should be the main topics when we're not having a guest speaker? I'm not sure I followed. Well, the purpose of the SEDS committee is to inform the SEDS updates for the documents. So we're supposed to, so some of the, the I'm in a group with other economic development directors um, for the state and some of the other regions like might have a number of public meetings to review the SEDS or to like, these would be considered a public meeting to review the SEDS and make sure that this group collectively agrees with these updates or these changes. It's supposed to be a very hands-on working kind of a group. So I just wasn't sure if that's how it was done in the past. Um, if people, like if you guys actually looked at the communities and talked about those more than once a year or how that feedback comes back to us um, to make those updates. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and uh, you know, maybe Rob and others will weigh in. I, I don't feel the meetings, there, there were many real working meetings. Um, and I don't, I mean, I might've missed that. I saw Rob kind of tilt his head the other way. Maybe I missed. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Oh, okay. So there's some agreement. I'm not, I'm not uh, standing alone in the field. Um, and I, I, for me, I think that was a bit of a frustration. So I, I would welcome, I would welcome that. So do you think a, a way to do it would be maybe to have um, like two or three communities invite them to come and, and talk about their part of the SEDS and what they're doing to get the feedback from the group or I think that would be great. I think you need more community involvement and maybe getting them to talk about their town would be some way to get them to stick around too. Cause I think, you know, Rob and Stephanie are mainstays, but I think, you know, we've seen Hanson probably two years ago and some Plymouth showed up once, but you know, getting them maybe to talk about their communities and maybe it'll get them to stay. Okay, great. I really like the idea of talking about what's going on in other communities and how that um, how projects in one community can benefit the other. Dottie, um, I, I think you, you talked about the Stone examples, but you know if you look at the Easton Industrial Park, and you know one of the big pushes in Easton is to bring sewer to 
that um, that area to those businesses so that they can continue to grow. We've had interest in that. There are businesses that can't grow um, because of the, the type of effluent um, that they generate and um, you know, with subsurface disposal systems that just wouldn't work. We have others that um, because of land constraints, because they have to reserve areas for their on-site subjects, it doesn't work. And several of those businesses employ um, a large number of workers from Brockton. So, you know, there's a benefit to Easton, there's a benefit to Brockton in, in being able to grow as much as we can within that district. So I, I think that's useful information to kind of identify where those other synergies are across the different municipalities. Yeah, and I think even identifying those could bring in, you know, other, like it's, it feels like I don't want it to be municipally centric from, you know, every meeting, that's all it is, but for, um, like for mass hire to see where are we trying to, to get jobs and how can we coordinate better with them or with Massasoit, what kind of, you know, um, uh, educational things or, or job training that we can do to help with a particular, like if we know that Brockton is gonna be bringing in life sciences, what are the kinds of jobs that will create? How do those people need to be trained and really um, work together on that? Or, you know, we're looking at the PACE program um, in Easton that Mass Development has. So what are some of the businesses that may benefit from that program or some of the other, you know, Mass Development is great with a lot of the programs they come out with, how can we take advantage of that and introduce it to, um, to projects that are happening right then? So, or even transportation, you know, we were, we talked to BAT last year um, in Easton about, can they bring transportation closer to our industrial park if, if we do that? And they do their, you know, magical numbers to see does, is there a cost benefit analysis to being able to extend BAT? So, those numbers change all the time because if you're going to have a big influx of workers coming to a certain route, maybe a year or two later, the decision might be different on bringing transportation to certain areas. So I think it's, it is really kind of important that we look at it kind of um, from the big picture. So maybe that's what we can try to do. And um, I think Jay, you have a really great point about um, trying to engage some of the, um, the communities that may not come to all of our meetings. And, you know, we appreciate it's people are busy and it's hard to find the time to come to the meetings. Even myself, I always got meetings when, you know, on the select board, I got notices of all these meetings and I didn't really see like, how does that apply to me as, the select board chair. Stephanie handles all that. I don't need to be at that extra meeting, but I didn't really uh, see the value of it until I learned more about it. So we, we really need to try to uh, educate more communities as to the value. So um, it's obviously not lunch anymore, <laughs> but maybe soon, soon that will change. So I think that's probably it on the SEDS. Um, if we wanted to uh, go around and hear from um, member updates. I think Mass Hire, you're having a job fair next, a virtual job fair next week? I think John is. I don't have the information in front of me, but I can certainly <clears throat> talk to John Murray and get have him get it. Um, they ran one of the fifth. I'm not, I'll have to double check with him. Okay. Anything else from Mass Hire you'd like to share? Um, nothing, uh, nothing uh, newsworthy as of yet. We're still continuing services virtually um, on the on the board side of the house. We have a couple of trainings upcoming. Um, we have some CDL seats open that we're working with Pocket Professional, and upcoming in April we'll be looking at a, doing a couple uh, manufacturing type trainings still in the works. Um, most likely will be virtual, I would think, still kind of working some of those things out. Um, mm. And I, I think most people know that we're still closed right now to the public um, till at least April 5th. And we're gonna play it by ear and go from there. 
but uh, the Korea Sun aside, they're still running everything virtually. Um, you know, they're available by phone and also all the services are online. You can just check their website for their calendar. They're still running pretty much everything. Um, so business as usual, just not the usual way. Great. Anyone else, Mary Ellen? Sure, um, let's see. Well, I'm sure that many of you, if not all of you have heard that um, the current president at Massasoit Community College will be retiring. So um, she's only been there about two years, two and a half years. And so um, we have um, someone who's been appointed as an interim. And so they're gonna be working together um, for the next two months, or for, sorry, for the, through the end of this month. And um, I apologize for not remembering um, the new president's name, but um, it was just recently announced. And she comes to us from Bridgewater State University. And um, she is an art history professor, um, but she's been in administration for quite some time. And part of her work has been overseeing career services and internships and things like that. So we think that's gonna be really helpful. Um, our current president and it looks like the, the, the interim, you know, both sort of have an understanding of the workforce side of the of the house, you know, not just the, the credit programs. So um, that's, that's a great thing. And then um, we just finished a grant program um, that we did with um, the city of Rockton. It was that they were the awardees. It was um, an IT essentials program. Uh, it was super successful as grant programs go. Um, it was awarded by um, the economic development um, secretary called Urban Agenda, comes out every year. Um, certain municipalities are invited to apply. You have to meet certain requirements. And um, we, we worked with Brockton and with Mass Hire and other partners to put together this program. And 15 students went into the program. There's always attrition. We, we were hopeful that we would at least have 13. Um, and then of course COVID hit and all of that. We had to switch everything from in-person to online. At the end of the day, um, the students received two industry recognized credentials and they're going to take their CompTIA exam in January plus a completion certificate for Massasoit. So it was, um, it, I, I think I mentioned all 15 that came in, like we still had 15 come out. So that was that was really, really great. And because it's an IT program, you know, we're hopeful that the job prospects for this group is really good. Um, we'll be working with Mass Hire. They've, they've already done a specialized, you know, sort of custom career center info session for us. And now they're doing one on, you know, doing a resume for career changers for people who want to go from one field to another. Um, so we're hopeful about that. Uh, we have a application in the pipeline to Commonwealth Corporation for an ESOL medical office assistant program. This would be a larger scale program and over a longer period of time, we're hopeful about it. Just haven't received word yet, but we have, I think about four hospital partners that have supported and partnered on the project, as well as um, the Brockton Career Center Mass High Career Center, and um, three workforce investment boards. Um, I think it would be about 45 students. And again, it's an ESOL medical office assistant. So part of the benefit there is that they, it would be bilingual. And so again, both with that program and the IT program, these are two of the highest areas of employment and allow for maximum sort of flexibility in terms of being able to go from place to place and with IT being able to work remotely. So um, fingers crossed on that. And um, I think that's about it from Massasoit. That sounds really great. And it sounds like that, um, that IT grant is really like gonna pay dividends. So congratulations to you and the city of Brockton on that. Oh, take the village, you know, like a whole team effort. But yeah, no, we're super, we're super hopeful about about helping these folks land, you know, good jobs. Right. Excellent. How about mass development, the other Mary Allen and Jay. 
Well, I would like to recognize Rob May and his team for their work on the Brownfield application that they successfully submitted in an incredibly competitive round across the state. And we're excited <laughs> to be working in downtown Brockton with him on that project. Um, other than that, we are just kind of moving forward with normal programs and we working with our new CEO who started uh, Monday, last Monday, I think <laughs> it's been a week. And um, we are super excited because he's a mayor of a gateway city. So he gets it. And I think it's going to be a positive thing for all of us, especially, you know, for our gateway cities to see how he wants us to move the agency in that direction. Yeah, def definitely a big, big push more for municipalities. I think uh, Sullivan has already met with him. Rob, yes. but, um, you know, definitely more of a push. What can we do to help municipalities more than we are already doing? So it's good for you guys. Um, we haven't got any uh, orders yet on what's going to change, but uh, we're looking forward to more marketing initiative, which we've always been kind of weak at as far as what we do um, and how we can help businesses and municipalities. So look for something uh, like that in the future, but otherwise so far so good. Excellent. Stephanie, you have any updates? Um, I'll just, last month I talked a little bit, or you asked me to talk a little bit about the, um, the east and outside uh, effort that's ongoing. I mean, one of the things that we're focused on from an economic development, an economic standpoint is helping our businesses that have been hard hit by COVID and um, are struggling. And we initiated a forum with business owners and other civic leaders to talk about what we might be able to do and, and what they might be able to do to help businesses operate during the winter months, especially with um, further physical distancing restrictions and gathering restrictions. We got a really good response from the community um, and what they have uh, focused on is just promoting East and outside and letting people know what businesses are open you know, for takeout, for curbside delivery, um, limited inside delivery. And the really nice part about this is that the, the community itself is really doing all the work. So they're shooting these little video clips that talk about East and outside and what are they doing and they're shot around the town. And then um, one of the business owners publishes them. We share them out through social media and it's gotten a lot of attention. And um, people, you know, there are a lot of people who are viewing these. So that program is continuing, they're expanding it. There's going to be some signage going around town kind of creating this little campaign. At some point, they're talking about doing an East and Outside challenge. So challenging people to do their own little videos on what they do outside and then how they tie it to the businesses. We are also tying that, we tied it to our grant application for the local recovery planning program, um, looking to expand that marketing campaign um, through COVID and then beyond coming out of COVID during recovery, but then even more long-term to help promote our target economic growth areas. One of the things that I thought was really great with that is the forum was originally to talk about what we could propose for the grant opportunity for the local rapid recovery grant and the winter spaces kind of thing. What could we do to help the community? And a lot of people spoke about, like, we think you should do this or that, none of the businesses, but the other people, like, you know, um, the, and we had really great ideas. And then the businesses were like, yeah, we're not doing any of that. <laughs> like, you know, we can, we're like just trying to stay like on top of things. There's no way we can bring our business to go to this park, to have this event and move around Easton. We need you to help us get people in our doors, not like these fancy marketing kinds of things. And it was as simple as they wanted us to help them organize the, a campaign 
to just tell people it's okay to go eat lunch outside and wear a blanket and sit under a heater and it's safe and, you know, kind of promote that stuff. And, and one of the things that I heard when I first started here talking with John Marion was in Brockton was that the businesses are scared. They feel alone. Um, they've got a lot of anxiety. So to see these restaurants come together and then bring in other businesses into the fold to do this really awesome video clips of, you know, why, how do you east and outside? And they're in front of the businesses and they're drinking hot chocolate and they're going snowshoeing. They work together on it and it really connected them in a way that they could kind of lean on each other and cheer each other up. And um, it, it really has kind of taken a life of its own. So I think that was a, a really exciting unintended consequence of that project. So Rob, do you have anything that you want to share? No? <laughs> um, you know, just, I'm looking forward to a new administration and hopefully some of the funding requirements um, for EDA grants um, will change priority or focus um, and make it a little bit more user friendly, but that's it. Terrific. And John, what do you think from Avon's perspective of everything that you heard today? Well, actually, I was hoping to get a chance to comment. Uh, this is obviously my first meeting, and I'm impressed by how much information I, 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 I've picked up already today. Um, but as I had a suggestion. We talked about trying to get more participation. Would it be, I mean, I am not a decision maker in town. I serve on the Conservation Commission and, and I represent the town as the alternate delegate. Would it make the sense or can we do this? Could I forward this invitation when they come up to one of the decision makers that I felt might blend in well and, and learn from this thing? Would that make sense? That would be terrific. And that's one of the things that we've actually talked about um, internally from a staff level with the council. If you look at our reports every month, we, we do put a lot of information into that. We hope the council members do share. So that's the goal. And I, you know, I've only been to a few of these meetings, so I wasn't sure that it was your first meeting. I know it was the first one that I saw you and really um, excited that you would take the time to join the meeting and want to you know, want to welcome you. And um, I think that that's, that's a really great suggestion. And we hope that, you know, we'll, we'll remind people, like, that's the goal is to share as much as possible. And also to follow us on social media, uh, Facebook and Twitter, and YouTube. Um, these meetings are now being recorded and put on the YouTube um, channel so that people can go back and look at them. You can share those as well. That's all I got for the moment. Awesome, thank you. And uh, Ray, do you have anything you want to add? I feel like the teacher calling on people. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I just um, wanted to. Um, I, I really don't have anything on the economic development side, but I'm on the transportation side, and um, so whenever, whenever you want, I can bring the uh, the group up. Uh, to, to speed on what I'm working on. That's in the future whenever whenever you can fit me on your agenda if you want want me to do that. So sure. it's, um, it's, we're working on a couple of things, working on road safety audits for intersections. And we're working on, I think I said this last time, the uh, climate change um, study we're doing also. So um, that's that's for future agenda. And if, if and when you want us to, from the transportation side to um, tell us what's going on. So, Terrific. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, the road safety audits and things like that are very important too to add to your application um, for whether it's MassWorks or EDA to say that, you know, you're looking, you've looked at the existing conditions. And so um, I think that that's, that's really a good point, Ray. So Mary Ellen, um, I, the only other things we have left are other business. And so I put that out there. Is there any other business? Um, Dottie, I did just double check. There is a, the virtual job fair that the career center is running is the 26th at 10 AM. Okay. If, if people are interested, I can send you the email and, 
if you want to forward it on to the group, I could do, I could send it to you. Yeah, we have a, a pretty exhaustive list of people that we in, invite to this meeting and people that I know aren't going to come necessarily like our legislators and so forth, but I want them to be aware of what we're doing. And then I try to send a recap email that gives a couple of highlights of what we did talk about, but any resources um, or grant information or things like that. So if you can send that to me, I'll put we'll it in that, um, in that write up that goes out because I think that's really important. And we'll also socialize that on our social media. Sure, I'll send it along right after this. Terrific. So we have our next meeting um, because we're doing the Tuesdays set as February 16th. And that is um, February vacation. I don't know if that impacts anyone this year, if there is such a thing as February vacation or vacation. Or, so, um, does anybody have any objections to still meeting that day? Should we make it a different week in February? I can meet. I think it's fine. Okay. I'm good with it. Terrific. And like I said, for March, we're going to have Dr. Melnick um, present at that meeting. So um, really, really excited and looking forward to that. And boy, we use his material for grant applications. All the data that was in there was really, really helpful. So I guess that's it for the day. Thank you awesome. all. Thank you guys. Well, thank you. I want to thank everybody for, for being here. And I especially want to welcome John Costa. Uh, it was nice you. to um, you know, have you join us and it's really great to get your comments and feedback as well um, as it is for everybody else to weigh in because you know this is our this is our strategy is to gather information and then put it back out there to our um, influencers, if you will, um, and people who can benefit by the work that we're doing. So um, thank you everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you next month. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We'll need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> oh, Rob. Second. Yes. Mary Ellen. Second. And all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.